In this first example, you have to remember what we did in the previous video, which is where we had Caitlin and Dave with those two chocolate bars. And the chocolate bars they could have had would be A or B or C or D. And it's asking, what is the probability that they both choose the same type? So we could have had an A and an A, or a B and a B, or a C and a C, or a D and a D. And here we have four different ways of getting the same chocolate bar. But out of how many ways? You may remember that there were four, four uh, different ones for A, four different ones for B, and so on. And there were 16 ways in total. So therefore the probability they both choose the same type would be 4 out of 16. In the second example, <clears throat> when two unbiased coins are tossed, determine the probability of obtaining two heads. Well, this is where we have to remember um, drawing our grid. So we could have the first coin as heads or tails, the second coin as heads and tails. So we've had <clears throat> head head, head tail, uh, tail head, tail tail. Or we could have done it in the tree diagram, which we did in, in the previous video as well. Either way, to find the probability of two heads, we're looking at this one here. And there's only one out of the four prob uh, prob possibilities here. So there is one out of four is the probability of two heads. And it's the same for two tails, because there's only going to be, oops, that was two heads, sorry, that was that one there. Two tails is part B. And again, there's only one way out of the four that are two tails. But here it says a head and a tail. It doesn't mean head first and then tail second. It means it could be this one or it could be this one. And because there are two different ways that you could choose from here, you could have this one or you could have that one, then the probability for part C is actually two out of four. In the last example, you have two fed dice and you roll them at the same time. What's the probability that the total score is 6? Well, we have to think about what we did in the previous video. So remember, we're looking for a total score of 6. Let's scroll up to our grid. The total score of 6 would mean this one, or 4 and 2 would have been 6, or 3 and a 3 would have been 6, and you can see here that it follows the diagonal. Uh, a 2 and a 4 is 6, and a 1 and a 5 is 6. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 6s here, because all of the numbers this side of it would have been less than 6, all the numbers this side of it would have been greater than 6. So there are 5 out of the 36 um, possibilities. So for this one, is 5 out of 36. For a number greater than 9, we have to look back at our table again and look at where the 9s were. Well, we could have had 9 from doing a 6 and a 3. A 6 and a 3 would have been 9. Or a 5 and a 4 would have been 9. Or a 3 and a 5 would have been... Oh, that would have been 8, sorry. <laughs> so we've got a... Um, I'm losing track here. 6 and a 3, a 5 and a 4, a 4 and a 5, a 3 and a 6. But it was asking for greater than 9. So that means that we have to choose all of the numbers that are this side of the 9. And that would be all of the, uh, the you've got a number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There would have been 6 numbers that side of the 9. So when we look at our probability for greater than 9 is 6 out of 36. And less than 7, again we look at our table, less than 7 sevens would have occupied the diagonal under the six. So we have to include the six and the fives. One, two, three, four. And the fours, one, two, three. And the threes, of which there are one, two. And the twos, which is a one. So all of the green circles here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So less than 7, there were 10 numbers out of the 36 that were less than 7. Now it's your turn. Have a go at the exercises.